And the idea is that the time has come to end this madness. That we and every life has the right to exist. That the use of fear and threat, the division of heaven, the identity of hell, is an idea that needs to end. Because if it doesn't end, it can be used as it still is today to threaten and control. And that's why UK is so large. Well, let's talk about UK trusts. There are three trusts, and we've spoken about this before, and, and the notes are there on the sites. And I, I urge anyone that is still uncertain about UK Trust to go and have a read on the sites, on ukadia.com, but on one-heaven.org, on any of the political sites, and, and read about the trust. But there are three trusts, divine trust, true trust, and superior trust. The divine trust, which we've spoken about before, is the identification and the, and the formality, recognizing that the divine creator and our higher selves, wishing to be separate from the divine creates a trust and the beneficiary of that trust is the divine person and so when we speak in terms of our soul our spirit of our divine person in relation to our divine trust we are the beneficiary we can't be the executor because we're not seeking to live in this life by claiming we are God we are Unique collective awareness. We are Eukadia. We are the one. You are all of those things. But in this instance, in the flesh vessel that you have chosen to come into, you are a man. You are a woman. And so when we speak of our divine trust, you are a beneficiary. And when we speak about our flesh body that is directed by our mind, our mind is the executor. Our mind is the general executor of our body and so we are the executor of the true trust and we are the occupant of the office of the general executor of any estate and all estate in the Roman system as well as what we have defined in Eukadia and then when we establish a trust relationship with the various Eukadia societies to trade between members to have issued travel warrants, to engage in certain services. Each of those is a trust relationship and each of those is considered a superior trust relationship where we agree as a trustee to adhere to the rules and obligations of that relationship. So there are the differences and each of them has a specific purpose and I hope no one feels in any, way, in any manner that there is any uncertainty. We, we will have a handbook on the Acadia Trust developed and published fairly soon. But in the meantime, I hope that summary clarifies for those that are still uncertain. Well, let's talk about private and public. And this is an area, private and public, that continues to be confusing, and it was confusing for me. Private and public is a matter of perspective. Eukadia as forms of law, as societies, as communities, require members to follow certain procedures when requesting certain functions. I'll give you a classic example. The UK societies will be turning on the gazettes, the public notice system of each of the societies so that you may lodge as perfected public notice, as, as published gazette, those notices that relate to your circumstance. For example, if you are lodging a will, then that will be a form of public notice. If you are registering your property 
as being superior and separate to the Roman system, then that is a form of notice. If you're engaged in certain legal matters, then that is also a form of public notice, as is the creation or appointment of officials by the grassroots communities. So there are certain forms and procedures, but all of it is defined within the Acadia laws. Well, that is public within the Acadia system. That is the public laws within the Acadia system. But if I was looking from the outside and I was in the Roman system looking at Acadia, then what I just described is private law. So whilst it is considered public to all those members within Acadia, to someone looking from the perspective of a Roman official, it would be private. Now from the perspective of the Roman cult and the private bar guild, they view their regulations, their forms, their procedures as public. Whether it's or not it's a corporation, whether or not it is still an estate, it is all viewed as public from their perspective. From our perspective, it's viewed as private. Now, what makes this extremely important is to recognise certain fundamental rules in public and private. In the Roman system, if one is seeking to identify certain remedy that they claim is available, then one needs to follow their public forms. And anything that is produced in Nucadia may not be recognised by their system. And this is why I said last week and the week before that when you change the name of one of their forms, you change the essence of the form, that form may in fact then be rendered null and void. It cannot be seen. So mixing public and private can be fraught with danger. There are ways to enter a private document into their public system by having it annexed. But I hope that perspective of private and public clears up some of the uncertainty and confusion that happens when people are speaking about what is private and what is public. I want to talk about agents and warrants. This was a subject we raised last week. And it was an area that was updated in the notes in Acadia and on the court sites and indeed in the canons of positive law. And what I'm referring to, you can see if you go to one, one-heaven.org, and if you click from the home page on positive law, go and have a look at Canon uh, article, I should say, 299, Roman Courts. And there's another place we updated this material, and that is located on any one of the court sites, like globe-union-court.org. And if you go and have a look at that, uh, please go and have a look and see uh, under Roman document procedures, you'll see that there is a page there called Agent. Now, I was on a call last night where it was raised that the administrative courts, and at least one judge of the administrative courts in America, no longer was pretending that the judges themselves are public officials but merely acting as uh, private contractors. And there are significant revelations when the veil is dropped and the individuals are admitting that they're not hiding behind any kind of public official. It does mean if they're not public officials, then why in the hell are they sitting in a public building claiming to be public officials? 
What we were talking about when we spoke about agent last week and warrants is that the private bar gets away with it. Whether they are a private contractor, whether they're claiming to be a public official, in this sense it is completely irrelevant because the presumption is made that you have agreed to them being the agent and therefore by being the agent, the administrator of the matter. Now, if you say I do not consent, that is a form of protest to the point being made or points being made by the judge or the magistrate, but in itself it does not eliminate the presumption necessarily of them being an agent. What we mentioned was an old lesson known for some time but not necessarily put into the right context when one says I do not recognize you I do not recognize you I do not recognize you you have no authority whatsoever to presume that I recognize you appoint you acknowledge you as my agent you have taken away more than three quarters of their authority. Why? Because that is the authority as an arbitrator upon which most court cases are based. Now all the other legal arguments can be raised, but this is very simple. If you are not my agent, if I do not appoint you my agent, and if I remove any presumptions to my, my agent, if I terminate you by saying I do not recognize you, which I can do by their rules, then that leaves them only one source of authority. And that is that they are presumed to possess warrants from some higher source, such as an attorney general, that has granted them by presumption authority over you because they are claiming by presumption you are a peon, you are a ward, you are a pauper. Okay? Well, if those are the presumptions, they must have a warrant, a signed warrant, a sealed warrant of authority. And if the judge will not produce that warrant because you have the right to contest every warrant that is one of the rights that they cannot remove from their court. It is fundamental to their system. It is, if you want to describe it, a common law right in that it is built into the statutes from the highest level of their system. If you cannot produce to me now your warrants of authority, you have no authority. And this case must be ended. So in addition to the recognition of agent, Remember now this additional information as to warrant. Now, in some jurisdictions, they may well have a warrant. Great. Let's see it. Because that piece of paper then gives you the opportunity to challenge the presumption by which that such a warrant is issued. Thank you for showing me a warrant. Under this, may, may, is it now the presumption under this warrant that you are considering me a ward, a pauper. No judge is going to get into a debate which ultimately leads to the presumptions of the state that you are their property. So I hope in the context where people are getting excited by the revelations, whether or not the system is admitting that they are private contractors, whether they're hiding behind being public officials, 
in this context is 